hello friends welcome back to my channel and uh, today we are back with an another exciting series of tutorial so this uh, going to be a continuation of my git tutorial but this will be a completely a different uh, topic because we see about git in the previous tutorial but this will be a gitlab ci cd tutorial uh, for beginners so you know like we have used Jenkins for a lot of uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment. Now we can also use GitLab for that. So before uh, now let's starting on the GitLab part. This will be a completely basics tutorial where we'll be talking about CI CD. We also will see about GitLab how to create project also how to make you know the basic preparation for the CI CD. Okay, so we'll see some projects, some configuration in that. So to start with uh, CI CD, if you don't know, CI stands for continuous integration, whereas uh, CD stands for continuous delivery, and also there is one more CD which is called uh, continuous deployment. So we have to understand these all these terminologies to you know to know more about uh, the CI CD process, what we will do in GitLab. Okay, so when CI say it's continuous integration then we have continuous delivery and continuous deployment now let's see about uh, all these uh, differences between CI CD you know and other CD so what is what this all about so in order to start let's start with continuous integration so as you know like you know why we do all these things because we have a lot of developers now in the recent you know uh, environments what we will do is we have developers working on a code right and we'll have uh, the source code in our git repository and we will have you know developers working on their own local repository right and you know so they every developer will have a small part developed and uh, you know, once they put into the main branch it should not have issues right so that is where this continuous integrations come into the part so in continuous integration these developers merge their changes back to the main branch as often as possible so what uh, it does it means like you know uh, there are developer a b c d so everybody have their own you know feature branches which they are working and what they will do is they will merge back to you know the a branch which is you know available for them and then we from there it will be branch merged to the main branch but there will be a different upload process in that but uh, continuous integration what will happen is these changes are validated by creating a build and running automated unit test so when these uh, developers want to make this uh, you know merges to the their branch what uh, automatically what happened is it will start a build of that application and it will do some unit test to make sure that it does not break the actual application so the benefit of this is like you know this continuous integration is uh, all these are automated process so this helps to avoid the integration challenges and check the application is not broken whenever a new commits are done so you know as you the statement says right so this automated uh, continuous integration helps in the integration challenges because multiple versions of uh, code comes up it will create a lot of integration issues uh, at the end right so if you do these automated checks and the application is got not getting broken uh, this will uh, you know help them to have a proper uh, process okay so how it will happen in a pictorial way to represent like you have a build right uh, which, and from the bill you have an automated unit test or integration testing which they will do it and you know based on that it will do a merge right so that's how it happens in the continuous integration uh, process now let's see about the continuous uh, uh, delivery okay so when we talk about continuous de delivery it's an extension of continuous integration okay and by which it automatically deploys all the code changes to a testing or staging environment so uh, in the continuous integration we do all the you know integration parts to make sure that the application is not broken but we are not uh, deploying that code into any testing or staging or production environment right it is still uh, kept aside so what in continuous delivery what we do is we will automatically deploy all those changes into a testing or staging environment we don't do it uh, to a production automatically okay but there are uh, possibility like you know you can stop in the automatic process at the staging environment then the final production uh, production you know will be with the manual intervention okay so that's a uh, continuous delivery now the goal of continuous delivery is to have a code base 
that is always ready for deployment for a production environment. What does it mean? Like uh, once you have a continuous delivery process in place, means you always, you know, whenever there is a change or some developer makes a code, you know, merge or ch checking, what uh, you know happens is like it will do all these tests, automatic process test, build all these things, and then at the end you will have, you know, a code uh, completely ready to be deployed in production. If you want, you can just click a button and or just say yes, then it will get deployed to the production. So uh, to just give it picture a person as we did for continuous integration. So you have build unit tests and then merge. This is would be the continuous integration part, right? Then if you after that you can do an automated acceptance test and also you have a, a deployment to staging area. And but after that should be a manual process. The deployment to production should be a manual process. So that is the difference between continuous integration and continuous delivery. Now, if we move, moving on to continuous deployment, so this also, you know, it's a continuation of that. So what the difference is, every change that passes all stages of production pipeline will be released to the customer or production environment itself. So what is it happens like when we shown about the pipeline where build, testing, uh, you know, staging, all those things are passed what it will do, do, do is like it will also deploy to the production or customer environment automatically so this is a completely you know automated process there is no humor in human intervention at all in this uh, continuous deployment so the whole process is automated so there is no uh, human intervention in this so if it's a build stage or if it's an uh, unit test or it's a merging or it's, as we said that's the continuous integration part or it can be you know uh, acceptance test or deploying to uh, you know staging area and even to deploy to production all are you know in an automated stage so that is the continuous deployment so the difference as you see the you know uh, dif between continuous integration uh, delivery and deployment so this is how it will look right so like the pictorial representation we uh, showed you this will be for continuous integration and if it's for a continuous uh, uh, delivery it will be you know like this where you have the production uh, activity at alone in the manual phase but if you go for a continuous uh, uh, deployment it should be like completely automated so there is no human interventions uh, completely all the stages are into the automated phase so before I get into the real process with the GitLab and the CICD I would request like if you are new to my channel or if you have not uh, subscribed to my channel click on the subscribe button and also like my video share and comment okay let's uh, now talk about the GitLab uh, tutorial so what we will do in this tutorial would be like new you understood now what is a CICD process so what we will do is we'll be creating a GitLab project and we'll upload some sample code there and we'll also see what are the some of the settings and also the requirement for a GitLab CI CD pipeline configuration. So we will be this will be a preparation phase. So you know it will be a step by step tutorial. So the, in this phase you will be able to understand what is a GitLab project and also what are the settings. Uh, what is a GitLab runner? You know you also need to know what is the file which we have to create uh, in a you know GitLab for a CI CD to be configured. All those things we will see in this tutorial. So let's get uh, started. So I have my GitLab. Uh, you know, it can be your uh, own instance, which you can uh, run it on some of your server, or it can be you know the SaaS instance from GitLab. Okay. So I have shown also one of my tutorial to how to set up GitLab on CentOS. You can follow that, and you can set up your own GitLab as well. So now, if you see, you know, you can see the projects here. So if I go to my projects, you can see these are the projects, right? And if you want to create a project, click on new project, okay? And I'm going to use a blank project and I'm going to give it name. So I'm going to give a name as uh, test maven project and you can give a description as well. So I will type this is a test maven Java project, okay? And I'm going to keep this uh, as uh, private. You, if you want to keep it public, you can keep that as well. But since the, this is a testing project, I want to keep it as private. Then I'll click on create. So now once you create, the project is created, but we don't have any data added, right? So now you can see these instructions. These all instructions we already seen in our tutorial for Git. So you know already like how to clone a project, how to do a commit, 
how to add you know the co contents into the staging area how to move that into the local repository right how to push that into the git repository all those things you should be knowing it right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just clone this project first okay so i'll just use this so i have uh, the git bash open so you can see you know i don't have anything inside uh, this folder so i'm going to use uh, uh, the command which we use git clone okay so i'm just going to run that so you can see we should have that project here so i'm going to use uh, test maven project okay and uh, now you can see this name has we have a master the right so what this means like we are inside the uh, git project so if i go to my git project you should have you know the project here okay but it's a blank project now what i want to do is i want to add some content so i'm just going to paste some content here okay this is a, a sample uh, java project okay and if i go to the git bash and uh, git status you should be able to see like there are some untracked file right so i have to add git add and then if i see git status it should show like there are something which need to be commit right then i will do a git commit and uh, the message initial commit it can be any comment okay so now you have the files added so now what you need to do is you need to push that into the repository right so in order to push the repository you have to use git push and hyphen u origin master okay so let's see what it does so you can see it's uh, done the push as well so let me come back here let me refresh this page so now you can see all the contents are pushed here right so now our git repository is uh, updated so you have all uh, you know the files over here now if you see okay you have different options like you know set up a ci cd add kubernetes cluster so and on, on the left side you have the project information repositories right issues merge request ci cd security deployment so the benefit of gitlab is you know it's a complete package it's not like jenkins uh, you know where you need to have uh, you know a lot of plugins to be installed but you already have uh, most of the features here itself but in order to do this uh, uh, gitlab ci cd one thing you should have is like you should have a file called uh, gitlab uh, hyphen ci dot yaml okay that's the file like similar to jenkins file you need to create a file inside this uh, uh, root uh, location so that it will take uh, you know uh, that so if you go to ci cd you will have you know uh, options like you know you can have to use the sample if you want to use this template, you can you have to create this file in order to start the pipeline. Otherwise, you will not be able to do it because all the whole definitions of our stages, uh, or about the you know uh, jobs and everything should be defined here. Okay, so that I will show you in the next tutorial how to write this one, how to start some Jenkins pipe. Uh, sorry, the GitLab pipeline uh, using this GitLab CI .yaml file. We'll start with so small uh, pipeline. Then we will go with the even maven projects so we'll do step by step so but a few things which you need to do is like you know we need to also have some uh, settings to be done so in ci cd you know uh, if you go to the settings you have something uh, these settings right general pipeline auto uh, devops runners so this runner is something which uh, uh, we need to set up so this would be a separate tutorial where i'll be also showing how to set up runner uh, but you know there are uh, w there are also calls uh, shared runners okay so but if you see these runners are shared across GitLab instance and they are free to use for public open source projects and uh, but uh, limited to 400 CI minutes per private project okay so if it's a private project you can only use it for 400 CI minutes but you can also set up uh, you know uh, GitLab runner using some instructions so I will show you that as well so uh, i would say like you know we will do that in the upcoming tutorial how to set up runner so runner basically you means like you know that you should have some place to run the pipeline right so if you're running a maven job you need to have a you know a setup where you have a, you know a system where you have maven available and we can you have to run those uh, build command there right 
so that's the uh, runner so we'll also see in the upcoming tutorial how to set up runners uh, for different scenarios whether it's a windows runner then we'll, we have to use powershell kind of commands if it's a linux we can use shell or you know if we can also use docker uh, so that you know we can create uh, docker containers and then uh, some of the things like maven and everything can run on the docker container itself and also something we you need to do is uh, you know we you also need to set up an ssh for gitlab for uh, you know connecting or pushing pulling you know all those things so you need to have an authentication between your system and uh, you know for um, your gitlab instance that also we will see in the upcoming tutorial as a separate one how to create ssh between your gitlab and your host machine so you should not have any issues when pushing or pulling the content okay otherwise you may get into issues like permission denied issues so uh, that also we will see it in the upcoming tutorial okay so in the ci cd section you can see like there are four sections like pipeline editor job schedules right so basically pipeline is the word we'll be you know having uh, all the job information let me show you a sample okay i will go to one of my project a project okay if I go to my game of life project and if I go to my pipeline you can see you know I have a few pipeline here right some of the, most of them has failed some of them I have cancelled right and the similar way you know if I go to my other project which is for a first project right if I go to the pipeline you can see you know I have a few projects passed right and you know some of them has failed and you know you, you should be able to see just the jobs here so if I go to the job you should be able to see the whole thing okay and um, you can also see you know how the jobs works and all those uh, features you should be able to see like finished right and all tags okay so all those things you should be able to see it uh, in this CICD section if I go to one of these past you know, uh, pipeline, you can see I have uh, a different stages like build, test, deploy, right? And there are different jobs. So all those things we will see how to create in the upcoming tutorial. But I just wanted to show you like these are some prerequisites which you should know uh, for uh, you know, uh, creating this pipeline. Okay, so you can see I have one gitlab.ci.yaml file, right, which I'm using it so similar way you know we will create the gitlab ci.yml file and also we'll uh, write down the content of the file to create this uh, build jobs so as i discussed uh, previously like what we will do in the next tutorials of this Git ci cd tutorial will be we'll have to set up ssh in gitlab for uh, authentication between your system and uh, gitlab so we will see that how to do that we'll also see how to do an installation and configuration of gitlab runner so we can do it on windows gitlab uh, windows runner as well also as on linux side so we'll see both scenarios okay because in windows we we, we probably mostly use the powershell commands whereas in the linux we can use other kind of uh, shell and uh, docker uh, those kind of commands okay and we'll also uh, see how to create gitlab pipeline and run the pipeline which i showed you some samples in the upcoming tutorial so please uh, you know keep uh, watching for more videos uh, on gitlab so this will be a really interesting tutorial and uh, you know like uh, what we use for jenkins and all those can we all will do all those kind of integration with gitlab as well so i hope uh, this tutorial is informative for you so keep uh, watching for more videos so click on the subscribe button and uh, like this video share and comment